Welcome to the chat box. I'm Emily Regalado, here to bring you a special edition of the book club. Let's dive into the wonderful world of books. So I'm here to bring you a weekly book club experience where I usually discuss one book in depth. But this week, I have a special guest author, Jessica Q. Stark. And basically, Jessica is a professor here at the English department at the University of North Florida, but she was born out west in California. She is also a published poet. Her latest book is Buffalo Girl, which we will discuss in depth. So Jessica, I kind of want to start out by asking how you actually got into poetry in the first place. Sure. I started writing poetry um, when I was un in undergraduate, and I started publishing um, during my PhD um, at Duke in English. And so, like, what like drew you into poetry specifically? Uh, for my PhD, I, I was trained as a scholar, so um, I did a lot of research. I did a lot of work in the archives and the libraries. I had a bunch of part-time jobs doing a lot of research in the libraries, and um, I figured out that I could actually use all of those research skills and scholarship in poetry. Um, so thinking about archives, thinking about reanimating different kinds of stories that I found in different archives. So using that kind of scholarly practice in a, in a way, in an artistic way um, with my poetry. Wow, that's really cool. So how long have you been in Jacksonville? Because you said you went to school at Duke, but I know you're from out west. So when did you move over here to Jacksonville? Yeah, I've been, this is my fourth year here. Um, yeah, so I was living in Durham, North Carolina for seven years before I came to Jacksonville. But I've moved around a lot. I lived in a lot of different cities outside of the United States and did a lot of traveling and wandering. Do you um, think that made you kind of like find your place as a poet, like all these different experiences you lived? Uh, sure. Yeah, I think, I mean, as a poet, you kind of absorb all of these different experiences in terms of um, of life, and it's all kind of cumulative, and I feel like it's all important. But I think wandering is really important in terms of becoming an artist in any sort of medium. And so you've been in Jacksonville for four years. So since you came to Jacksonville, did you go right into um, being a professor here at the university? Yes. So the whole, the only reason why I came to Jacksonville was to teach at the University of North Florida. So okay. yeah. Yep. All right. So I think it's time we kind of delve into your books. We can first talk about um, Savage Pageant. So can you tell me a little bit about this book? Because I sure. haven't really heard much about this one. Yeah. So this is my first book. Um, it's, uh, this was really um, kind of sparked by how my love of the archives. So I got really obsessed with this zoo um, that closed in 1969, but it was it housed all of Hollywood celebrity animals. So if you think of like Leo the lion for MGM mm -hmm. or um, Bimbo the chimpanzee, any of the animals used in Hollywood films, they all lived in this one zoo. And it was housed in right outside of LA in Southern California. And it was like a really interesting site just for different kind of rumors and Hollywood gossip, but also thinking deeply about like land acquisition ship and entrepreneurism. Mm -hmm. um, so I did a deep dive in terms of researching this place. And I found that it was like such an interesting place to explore different questions around spectacle and um, you know, who, gets to say what is a spectacle and um, thinking about land ownership, thinking about our relationship to land ownership, and um, thinking about celebrity in general. Um, so what kind of happened when they closed the zoo? Like what happened to all the animals that lived there? There was like a big, there was a big auction that auctioned off all of the animals to different kind of exotic animal <laughs> owners. Um, yeah, it was a big kind of end of, end of end of term sale for um, that zoo. So yeah, it was a really a really interesting place. Um, it, but there's a lot of kind of cross current histories in terms of this place as well. Um, very close to this place, there was also one of the worst nuclear fallouts in US history that was wow. covered up for several decades. So, um, so it's not only about the zoo, but it's also just like about this shape shifting history around this plot of land that um, so oftentimes gets covered up for obvious reasons. Wow, that's so yeah. cool. So I really can see how you're explaining in the beginning how like archives and like all this history kind of has like guided you into 
putting a creative outlet towards that and writing poetry. So I think that's really cool. So that was less, would you say that was less of a pers less personal than the newest book you've done, Buffalo Girl? Yeah, so um, when I wrote this, I um, was pregnant with my first child. Okay. Um, so I actually let that personal part of the writing experience leak into the, the book itself. So it's also about, and if you look at this animal, like I, I actually picked this animal for the cover mm -hmm. because it looks kind of like a pregnant it's like awkwardly, it looks yeah, like an I awkward pregnant, <laughs> pregnant person or <laughs> animal. Um, and I was interested in, in that too, like thinking about doing all of this research on this kind of violent history around this place and also thinking about the kind of discordance that goes on with bringing a child into this sometimes violent world. So um, there are poems about um, that kind of conflicted feeling in this as well. So. It's, it's heavily research-based, but I also let the kind of personal leak into it. I think that's yeah. beautiful. All right, so let's go kind of into Buffalo. Sure. Girl. Yeah, so this is my latest book. Um, it just came out last year. And I'll say that this one feels uh, more deeply personal because I wrote it, I finished writing it about four years ago. And um, it just was published last year, but in the year that it was published, I uh, my mother got sick. She was diagnosed with late stage cancer, and she passed away within months of its uh, publication. Mm -hmm. So this is a book that's deeply indebted to my mother. It was written about my mother, um, written about portions of my of my mother, and she immigrated to the United States in 1975 at the end of the Vietnam War. Um, so it was, it's a lot about like her journey here, um, but also just. Um, kind of the beautiful and interesting and complicated person that she was. Uh, and it's, yeah, largely indebted to her, but um, very personal since um, I had to grapple with her passing during its publication. Wow, did you yeah. find it like difficult to write about your mother or did it come more naturally than you thought it would? I feel like it, it was certainly difficult. I spent a lot of time with her after my first son was born and um, we just spent a lot of time, like a lot of downtime just sharing stories. Um, and she told me some stories that she had never told me before. So um, that kind of intimate moment after my son, my first son was born, um, sparked a lot of my interest in writing something about her and homage to her. Um, and le needless to say, I didn't really know the urgency of it back when. I felt like this deep kind of insatiable urge to write something in homage to her. I can understand that because like my grandparents immigrated from Cuba to the United States and sometimes my grandmother will just tell me all these stories and I'll be like wow like you never <laughs> told me that before but yes. I guess that like adds another layer to the immigration story but yes. I also like when I was reading up the synopsis that you paralleled your mother's story to the Little Red Riding Hood fairy tale I thought that was so cool I kind of want to ask a little bit about like how you correlated the two sure yeah so that's where the research comes in um, so I was um, simultaneously while I was having these conversations with my mother, I was thinking about my second book and what I wanted to write, and I was heavily researching um, the Little Red Riding Hood story. It's one of the oldest kind of stories. It predates written language. It's cross-cultural, um, and people, nobody really knows like where it started or where it came from originally. There's a lot of conflicting stories about that. Mm -hmm. um, and kind of like with Savage Pageant, when people like, when the history isn't complete, that's like when I get really interested. Right. Um, so I was thinking about the Little Red Riding Hood story um, in conjunction at the same time as thinking about my mother's own wandering from her home country of Vietnam here. So like I see that when you're writing a lot of like curiosity and like wanderlust is yeah. like incorporated yeah, in this definitely. which also reflects your own life and I think that's like so like authentic for you to do like you're writing about something that you you were like connected with and something that you find like open-ended and interesting. Absolutely thank you. Are you working on anything else? Yeah I'm working on a third book right now. Um, it is tentatively titled Antoinette. Okay. Um, it's Similar, so like it's, I got kind of a research um, draw to the figure of Marie Antoinette, but also I'm really interested in um, the kind of linguistic slippage between the word Antoinette and the word internet. Okay. <laughs> and so thinking about not only Marie Antoinette as the person, but all of these like weird different permutations of 
her figure, her celebrity, um, her image, and how it's changed and been manipulated over the years, and also how we kind of grapple with um, internet subjectivity, how we are on the internet, um, our fake selves on the internet, and um, especially like how the women, how women are treated on the internet. Interesting. Well, that's super cool. I'm looking forward to that coming Thank out. You. <laughs> that's all for today's edition of the book club. We'll leave you to your reading. I'm Emily Regalado, and I'll see you next time on the chat box.